Hello, I'm Paul Beer, and I head up North America Risk Managed Services at CyberSource. For those of you who don't know, CyberSource is a Visa solution and a global payments risk management platform. Uh, my role is to help companies of all sizes, small, medium, enterprise, and even nonprofit manage the risks associated with payment acceptance, uh, particularly in the e-commerce space. I'm coming to you from my home in Washington State. I live just outside Seattle in Kirkland. Um, you know, we've been enjoying some exceptionally warm weather here, especially for May. That certainly comes with allergies, so I'll apologize for that in advance, but I personally will take it. Um, certainly, it beats the alternative of rain this time of year. So, uh, that being said, you know, we hear this um, certainly a lot right now, but these are interesting times. I'll start by saying I hope that you, your friends, your family, all those important to you, your colleagues, are not only staying safe, but also staying sane during these times, it's certainly easier said than done. So this is the first of a few videos that I'm going to share with you. I'll talk about the current fraud landscape. And you know, when I say current, I certainly mean current. We know that everything happening related to this pandemic is changing and evolving daily, sometimes within, within a day. And, and we're keeping up with that. Um, what we're seeing with this pandemic is impacting people, of course, and when things impact people, they impact consumer sentiment, sentiment, and that's impacting what we're seeing with consumer behavior. So with that, I encourage you to you know, comment with any questions or feedback that you have below, um, and we'll do our best to get those answered for you. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the current fraud landscape and how the current pandemic has created the perfect storm. So first, let's talk about the overall landscape. First, um, this may go without saying, but it bears repeating. The payments and fraud landscape is almost unrecognizable compared to what it looked like three months ago. I gave a presentation at a payment summit in Salt Lake City in, I think, the third week of February. And I was recently looking at that deck where I spoke about consumer sentiment, um, customer buying behavior and patterns, and virtually none of that was applicable today um, to, what, to what is happening today. Really, the only things that are applicable there are the impact of the migration of brick and mortar to cart not present. Um, you know, some merchants have you know, rapidly responded to new fraud threats. I mean, some merchants are uh, seeing dramatic drops in volume, of course, based on their industry, and some are seeing enormous spikes in their card not present volume, um, you know, where they have businesses where typically customers are going into stores, and right now they're shopping online and maybe other having deliveries, or right now with things opening up, they're having um, contactless pickup at their brick and mortar location, but the purchase is happening through the, the e-commerce channel. Some industries are dealing with new government regulations. Um, certainly that's industry specific and, and location specific, um, not just at the federal level, but also the state. And everyone's dealing with different challenges with their own workforce. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, you know, some industries attempted fraud rates have increased. Um, you know, and, and what we're seeing there is there are vulnerabilities in fraud screening. And there are some reasons for that too, which we'll, we'll talk about. You know, some of that is machine learning, some of that is is human resource based. But the real idea here is that in the near future, you know, fraudsters are gonna do what they do best, and that is exploit gaps and weaknesses. Um, fraudsters are constantly, you know, the analogy I use is, fraudsters go around um, looking, they're testing doorknobs to see who forgot to lock their door at night. And right now they are, you know, they're really checking to see who forgot to lock their door. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that with um, fraudsters who are checking to see which, you know, which clients or which merchants have, um, you know, possibly lowered their protections a little bit to try and increase revenue. So it's very important that um, everyone stay vigilant right now, um, but especially merchants as they're as they're looking at ways that they're possibly being exploited, to consider that you know they may be exploited in a much bigger way than they normally would be. So that brings us to the perfect storm, and you know you look at, you know, this is a time when you have fraudsters looking to exploit. And you have merchants out there most vulnerable, as I mentioned. Um, aside from the vulnerability of having reduced workforces, you also have a scenario where, you know, the economy was in many ways almost turned off. So some businesses are relaxing their fraud rules just to make sure that they can generate or, or recognize more revenue. So sometimes merchants will relax their fraud rules to enable that. Well, fraudsters know that. And to do that, they will... Um, or to take advantage of that, they will simply, you know, ping and, and or brute force attack a merchant's website to see what they can get through. When you combine that with the fact that, you know, for merchants who rely heavily on manual review, those review teams may be over capacity, 
Um, some of those merchants may have had to lay off or furlough their review teams. Um, so they're working with the diminished workforce. Um, they may have had to move to an accept or reject model where they're no longer using review. Um, maybe they've introduced um, you know, some sort of positive rules to try to reduce the amount that's going to manual review. Um, of course, you know, card testing has been a, a big issue throughout 2020 and, and you know, 2019 and 2020 from a lot of merchants who I've spoken to. And that's just, that's only increased with what we've seen happening recently. Um, botnet attacks as well. Um, and you know, that, that certainly goes in conjunction with the, um, with the card testing. And we've seen authorization decline rates increase uh, upwards of 90% uh, for some merchants. So as far as the impact of the immediate spike of attempted fraud, um, we're going to be seeing this in the next couple months. And this is almost the inverse of what a lot of merchants enjoy during November and December, retail merchants, where the denominator grows for their fraud chargeback rate because they have a lot of genuine orders. Well, in this case, with a lot of uh, customers, good customers not shopping, the denominator is going to shrink, but the fraud population is going to remain the same or possibly even increase. So you're going to have a lot of fraudulent transactions or the same number of fraudulent transactions, but hitting a smaller denominator. And with that, your fraud chargeback rate is going to increase. Um, so, you know, this is a concern and this is something that you know, it's difficult for merchants to be able to do much about because you can't, you can't magically generate um, good revenue. Um, it just places even more importance on identifying the bad behavior and catching the fraud before it becomes a chargeback. Um, the last point that I uh, want to make about the current fraud landscape is about machine learning. And, you know, we've, in the industry, we've talked a lot about machine learning over the last you know, I, I would say the conversation kicked off maybe six years ago when, you know, the, the buzzword was big data and then it's evolved into machine learning. And, you know, the, the reality is that machine learning is just not in a place yet where any machine learning model or artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence could have been built or, uh, with COVID-19 in mind or could have predicted COVID-19. It's, it's simply not, it's not feasible. Um, machine learning needs to be taught and this had never happened before. So, um, you know, squared models are built around historical patterns, uh, historical behavior. Um, so these models are learning, certainly the behavior that's been happening, the shopping patterns have been, that have been happening over the past, you know, several weeks and now a couple of months, but even that's evolving and changing. And if you think about what's happening here in the United States, what's happening in, uh, in one state can be dramatically different than what's happening in another state as far as who's shopping where and you know, shopping online, what, you know, time of day and things like that. So this can result in some inaccuracy from, uh, from machine learning decisions. You know, we expect these models to recalibrate over time, certainly. Um, but of course this could lead to the fact that in a post COVID-19 world, eventually, um, these models could re react adversely to what will then be viewed as atypical behavior. Um, so we'll see what happens at that point. But with that, um, to recap, I just want to leave you with three important points. So something that I tell my team frequently is that, uh, really everything is written in sand. Um, I'm inherently a planner and I like to plan for as many contingencies as possible, but, um, sometimes that's not possible. And right now the, you know, the phrase of the day is that agility wins. You cannot plan for everything. And you know, you have to be able to respond to what's happening and, you know, be able to shift as needed. Secondly, you know, attacks are up. Perfect Storm is draining resources and we're already under severe pressure. And that's something that that's a reality that we have to deal with. Um, and we have to make the most of the resources that we have and maximize those and, um, and make sure that with that, that math issue and that denominator problem, uh, we don't run into chargeback problems as merchants down the road here in the next few months. And, Finally, you know, machine learning is only as good as what it's been taught. Um, there are false positive risks there. There are false negative risks as well with chargebacks. Um, you know, so that's something that you always want to look at to make sure that your, your models are, um, they aren't decisioning things as if it was January of 2020. You want to make sure that it's looking at things as if it's, you know, actually May of 2020 or, um, you know, the, the COVID-19 scenario. Um, so with that, uh, I'll leave you now um, for this segment at least. Again, I'm Paul Bear. I'm um, head of North American Management Services for CyberSource. Join us for our next video. Um, we're going to talk about um, trends associated with this pandemic. Don't forget to leave your questions or comments below. Um, if you 
feel that this video would be useful or helpful to someone, please feel free to tag them. Um, this is an unprecedented time for all of us, and uh, we're doing our part to share what we know. So see you soon. Thank you.